So um, I have been thinking what kind of thing I can um, tell you here. Well, this notes. So um, I wanted to talk about Osio, of course, our open source compass, your open source compass. And uh, I wasn't sure how to, because Osio is so big, I wasn't sure how to uh, get a good overview of everything that OSEO is, because I think most of you, even if you are involved in OSEO, are involved only on a small portion of OSEO. So you may not even be aware how incredibly huge our community has become. And I'm not talking only about numbers. I mean, this is a full room. Uh, and all the people that are contributing and all the projects that are joining, but also all the initiatives, all the different aspects our community uh, just covers. So, for those of you who may be new to the um, open geospatial community, um, I would say that these are the three main um, categories of communities. So, on one side we have open data, led by OpenStreetMap, of course. Uh, on the other hand, we have OGC, which has open standards, and then we have the software part, which is leaded by OCEO, but we have, of course, the Linux Foundation, Location Tech, we have many other communities, but the OSGEO is Open Source Geospatial Foundation, and we focus only on GIS. So as I said, OSGEO is huge, so it's, um, I was looking for some use case that can cover all the cases uh, to explain um, everything that we do, and I could only think of catastrophic things to explain, to cover all the use cases, so I came up with this story. So, um, hmm, a uh, zombie kitten apocalypse, um, and how, uh, thanks to open data, open standards, and open software, people can survive. So, uh, yes, we don't have any dress code, we have kittens in keynotes, so I'm sorry you, you didn't feel uh, that you could wear <laughs> something more comfortable. Uh, so the first thing when uh, zombie apocalypse uh, starts is to start thinking on strategy. So we need to get some intel in our surroundings and uh, wait because we don't have, well, open street map. We have missing kittens. Uh, we find in the biggest uh, open license geospatial, this is not being loaded. So this was an open street map view. Um, uh, so in open street map, you have the biggest open license uh, geographical database in the world. And it's, uh, everybody can contribute. Uh, it's collaborative. And uh, of course, you can, as it's open license, you can use it for anything you want. It may be because you have a zombie kitten apocalypse or because maybe you have to, uh, you want to start some business and you need data. Maybe because um, you are just, um, you know, doing some uh, um, disaster management in some regions. So you want to have some um, real time updated data. And the best way to do to get this is to collaborate with OpenStreetMap. I don't know if I should just put my laptop here with all the things loaded. Uh, yeah, but all the background things with all the features of OpenStreetMap are not here. So, and you are missing cuts. <laughs> uh, yes, it's difficult to follow like this. Let me um, just, yeah. This is an example of a mapping party of the hot uh, OpenStreetMap uh, community, which are the ones that uh, take care of uh, when there is, an, uh, for example, a natural disaster. They quickly try to update all the uh, things that are there. Marvel is an uh, app uh, desktop um, application for um, handling OpenStreetMap data. You can visualize it. Yeah, I think we need because we are not seeing here marble. Let me. Apologize for the internet. It's, it's breaking us both. Oops, sorry. 
Vorstand. Zum This is quick, don't worry. It's black here as well. Yes, it's... Lots of things, but I can close all of them. Uh, I think we are... Already? Yes, that's my background. So I can just, sorry for this, this is typical demo problem. Could be a good option, yes. Ah, speaker view. Okay, I don't care about speaker view then. Ah, no, pop ups. <sighs> okay. So we were. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> so, as I was saying, OpenStreetMap, and now it makes sense because you can see that, for example, here you have a lot of features already added. I mean, it's very complete, um, OpenStreetMap, so it's a good base database to start working any project, uh, business or not. The hot OSM for mapping party uh, endangered zones. And Marble, which uh, may be used to load OpenStreetMap data and uh, maybe search for points of interest. And I know what you're thinking, because this is an apocalypse, so uh, probably internet is completely down and broken. But I don't know if you know Giphy.net, which is a, um, a free, decentralized, neutral, global network project, which means that uh, you can join it for free with an antenna. And we have a lot of nodes already, and this helps in case of catastrophes also, because um, you can just join this network and you are there. There's no need for a centralized government or ISP. Um, where can we put this uh, OpenStreetMap data? In PostGIS, which uses GEOS, which is a C++ library for uh, geometric fun functions. And PostGIS is the extension uh, of uh, Postgres. Do you don't see anything? Yes. Um, so this is pgadmin4, which uh, contains uh, PostGIS uh, functionality, so you can see the, the data in your map. Um, yes. And how do we convert the OpenStreetMap data to uh, PostGIS, uh, to insert it into PostGIS with GDA, which is a very useful um, library to transform from different um, types of formats of data to another formats of data. This will be to uh, add data. And uh, this is everything is good because we have a lot of data, but that data was from before the apocalypse. So we need to update that data because buildings are blowing up and exploding. So uh, how can we get real time data or update data? Um, probably what we want to have is some kind of field collection and sensors. Um, so this is a real patent from CIA in the 60s. They tried to put some sensors on cats and send, send cats uh, somewhere so they can collect data. It didn't work because cats cannot be properly trained. 
but uh, we can maybe use them because we want to monitor the cats, uh, so we want to add some sensors. How can we add sensors? Maybe using Arduino. Arduino is free hardware, which means you have all the schematics. If you have a um, microchip uh, printer, you can build your own Arduinos, and they have a lot of uh, sensors already uh, that are also free hardware, and you can print and use, and you know exactly how they work. So Arduino is very um, connected with the open source community. So yes, we have open networks, we have open data, we have open hardware, which we can use freely with no restrictions. And uh, probably what we have is not um, this free hardware or printer. So we have a mobile phone where we can install something like GeoPaparazzi, which uh, allows us to do field collection. So we go out uh, with the mobile phone, we collect some data, we go back, we get that data. This is the kind of data, for example, that you can col uh, collect with these field collector apps. And if you don't like GeoPaparazzi, we have QField, which uh, relates a lot with uh, QGIS, and GVSIG Mobile, which relates with uh, GVSIG App Desktop. And uh, they are more or less similar. I just had the GeoPaparazzi um, screenshots more at hand. But uh, they uh, allow you to uh, collect any kind of data. You can also use Open Data Kit, which is available. And uh, if you are really lucky, you may have some drones uh, there. So you may have some ortho photos, uh, photos from this um, area. So you can collect data without having to go out and uh, collect uh, the data yourself, which may be dangerous. And then you can process these photos with Orfeo Toolbox. Uh, so you can uh, extract data from those photos instead of doing manually. Uh, you can use some algorithms to extract data, which may be data like where are the kittens right now, so you know where they gather, at what times they, they, they move from one place to another, if there are some places that attract kittens more, like, I don't know, tuna shops. And then you uh, start getting all this data, and then you can process that with GRASGIS, QGIS, and GVC on your desktop, and extract patterns, analyze the data, conflate data. So you really have a lot of power here already, and notice that we haven't used any restricted license software. So um, at some point, this uh, group of OSGEO geofox um, discovered that there were other people that survived the first wave of the zombie apocalypse. But uh, the first uh, people that they uh, found, they were not alive because they couldn't survive because they didn't have uh, open source software. So they, they, I don't know, their license expired, they had some problem and they couldn't fix a bug, so they died. Uh, but other people use hybrid systems, they could survive, so uh, they give them OSGEO Live, so they have OSGEO software running on a pen drive to easy use them. They give them geo for all um, uh, outputs to uh, learn about this OSGEO software and how to use it and how to um, be able to do a lot of things they didn't even know they have. So now we have a lot of different communities that are using hybrid systems or open source systems, and they are connected through this Giphy.net network, and they start building apps, and they start sharing the data, and they start um, uh, setting up catalogs to, uh, so you are able to search what data have some group, what data have another group. Uh, by the way, these web apps, um, web applications like GeoNetwork use libraries like open layers behind it. So you see the map, you can pan, zoom, and everything. Uh, some other groups install a GeoNode, which is another um, SDI, and some other group maybe installs uh, PyCSW, which is uh, light lighter than GeoNode and GeoNetwork, but maybe that's what they are comfortable with, or that's what they really needed. And now that this data is flowing, they also start building um, web apps so, uh, focus on different things with GeoMos and MapBender, which are frameworks to uh, build web apps. Um, and they, maybe some of them start um, sharing uh, points of interest, some others start sharing their results, some others start sharing 
um, photos. And uh, there is now a growing ecosystem of a lot of data flowing everywhere. Uh, so they start thinking on OGC standards and how to share this with WMS, WFS. So they, some of them install degrees, some others map servers, some others GeoServer, which uses GeoTools, another uh, Java library. And uh, now, uh, you know, you can uh, get data from this person, get data from this other person, conflate it in your computer, generate some output, and then share it with, using your own um, catalog. Uh, whoa, it's not very well. Uh, so in the end, a lot of things are happening there, and maybe um, some of them discovered that they don't have enough power capacity to run some algorithms. So some of the uh, groups that have more computer power install Sue project or by WPS to allow other people to run algorithms in their computers. So uh, software as a service, you may say. And uh, now they are able to share a lot of things. They have a lot of computer power. They start generating open geoscience. They discovered that the zombie kittens were not zombies, they were vampire kittens. They learned how to uh, fix the problem and cure them all. And then they celebrate with a Phosphor G conference they organize to share everything they have learned and everything they have built. And um, I, know, I know this has been quick because I, I didn't want to take much of your time, but you realize I talk about a lot of software. I left a lot of software initiatives behind because it's impossible to go over all of them. But there's plenty of choices to choose from. There's, I would say, no use case unless it's very specific and weird that it's not already covered with what we have. And if it's not covered, please ask for it, share for it, do a patch. And remember that if the license of your software does not spark your joy, you can just thank it throw it to the trash and change to open source software because you will be able to do anything you want to do. Um, I want to, uh, I've read this uh, several times on Twitter by different persons. We should start saying these kind of things that no one has ever been fired for hiring Phosphor-G because it's true. I mean, and this is the kind of things that uh, restricted license companies use to explain why you should use them. No, no, no. Phosphor-G, uh, OCO software, or not OCO software, but open source software uh, is completely use useful, it uh, covers all the use cases, there's no reason not to use it, and there's many reasons why to use it, because you are not restricted in what you can use, uh, what you can do or not. Uh, you are not restricted on how you can extend it, you are not restricted, restricted on how you can modify it and then share it with other people. And that's really important because, um, yeah, freedom saves lives. And I'm not also talking about this uh, zombie getting a book lives, which is kind of extreme. I'm talking about all these people that may be fleeing from wars, that uh, maybe have some uh, hurricane just uh, breaking all their buildings. And uh, I mean, there are people or even just simple things like I want to start uh, a company and I can't pay uh, big fees or I don't want to have vendor lock-in because I don't know where I'm going to end up. Uh, really, open source uh, software is the only thing that guarantees that uh, we are sustainable, that we can survive in any uh, scenario, and that uh, the, the only software, the only kind of license that uh, really allows you to do anything you really need. And this has no turning back. I mean, we have seen this on uh, operative systems uh, in the 90s, 80s, 90s, Microsoft uh, say that uh, Linux was the enemy. And now they are trying to convert Windows to open source. So this is the future. Everybody knows that and the ones that uh, uh, that fake it and say in public that open source is not the future is just because they may have some commercial interest or some hidden interest, but really, this is the future. And the more we contribute, the more we exercise this freedom, the more things we do with free and open source software, free and open source hardware, free and open source data, and all the free and open source things, the more use cases they cover, the more extended they will be, the more they will be helpful, the more sustainable they will be. 
So please contribute your part. Thank you.